I believe that every gardener who loves to grow vegetables wonders at some point why cucumber seedlings planted outside in the spring might sit around for a couple of weeks without showing any signs of growth. Sometimes in our impatience, we start looking for some fertilizers or biostimulants to speed up the process. If you start searching the internet or YouTube, you will most likely find hundreds of videos suggesting a method using baker's yeast, sugar, water, and even milk. And being a curious person, I decided to conduct a simple biological experiment. I planted my cucumber plants at the end of May, and since then they have been stubbornly sitting and not growing much, most likely due to spring temperature fluctuations and low root biomass. I chose two plants of approximately the same size and variety, with the same soil and lighting conditions, spaced about 5 meters apart and surrounded by similar plants with similar densities. Because it's so hard for me to film the entire setup, and the plants are not visible enough amongst the other garden plants, I mark them as plant number one, which is the experimental, and plant number two, which is the control. These cucumber plants belong to the heirloom variety Punakira or native Indian white cucumber. They normally grow as large bushy plants, produce a good amount of cucumbers during the growing season, and are disease resistant. I assume these two plants were good candidates for this experiment, and we have a video on our channel about this variety with the link in the description. I just wanted to understand if the baker's yeast and sugar method is really an amazing fertilizer as advertised, or just another garden myth. So I chose one recipe and followed it step by step. As recommended in one of the videos, I combined 10 liters of water with a full tablespoon of baker's yeast, a full tablespoon of sugar, and half a glass of milk. I mixed it and let it sit for a while and started watering plant number one. I poured approximately a few liters of the solution under plant number one every day for 10 days. Then I stopped and observed what happened. My control plant, plant number two, was just watered with tap water or rainwater. And here you can see all the changes in chronological order. I calculated the number of leaves, measured the length, and compared the leaf color. But the control not only grew in sync with the experimental plant in the beginning, but at some points grew faster and started producing flowers much sooner than plant number one. Approximately three and a half weeks after starting, I decided to stop the experiment because I didn't observe any significant difference between these two plants, quite the opposite of the expected result. I swallowed the bait, and now I've learned my lesson. I know for sure that the so-called amazing homemade fertilizer for cucumbers is just an internet hoax. It won't make my plants grow faster, double the crop, or keep them free of diseases. It's only a popular garden myth. However, I wanted to dig a little bit deeper and argue with those gardeners promoting this method. First of all, anyone promoting any type of fertilizer should provide the composition numbers of NPK, or nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium ratios. I haven't seen a single video where a gardener clarifies this. According to the website GardenMyths.com, these numbers are really low, especially in a solution of one tablespoon per 10 liters of water to make a significant difference and increase nutrient uptake for cucumber plants. Some might tell me I used the wrong recipe, but I can assure you it doesn't matter because these are all hoaxes anyway. Secondly, baker's yeast is a single-celled fungus that can rapidly multiply in favorable conditions. Although yeast is rich in vitamins, amino acids, and microelements, it also needs to uptake these sources for its own propagation. So living, dividing yeast cells will compete with soil microbiota for nutrients. Thirdly, baker's yeast has nothing to do with nitrogen fixation and can serve the purpose only as collapsed dead cells, releasing nutrients and making them available for nitrogen fixing bacteria. For that purpose, I can use composted soil from my compost pile and get much better and faster results. Composted soil, or black soil, rich in humus content, has all nutrients readily available for the plant. Fourthly, I searched for scientific information on the subject and couldn't find any serious research on baker's yeast used as fertilizer. If you know any, please let me know in the comments. But most research points to mycorrhizal fungi and their symbiotic relationships with plants or the use of yeast waste generated by the brewing industry as biofertilizer. 
I found one article stating that monocot plant roots, like sugarcane, can absorb yeast cells whole through a mechanism called rhizophagy. The article quotes, Therefore, it is feasible that the growth-enhancing effect of yeast supplementation that we observed does not require the yeast to be alive, end quote. Rhizophagy allows plants to absorb dead microbes around roots to obtain nutrients. The article is linked in the description. Healthy, diverse soil microbiota, plenty of sunlight, and moisture are all I need for my cucumbers. I can add wood ash to supplement potassium and reduce soil acidity to improve absorption. I can add composted soil or leftover coffee grounds to increase nitrogen content. I can add fish bones under the plant to increase phosphorus. But healthy microbiota is the number one need. And for that, I don't use any pesticides, herbicides, or fungicides. In conclusion, yeast fungus in the form of dead collapsed cells may increase nutrient uptake for your plant, just like many other organic decomposed materials. However, not as part of multiple YouTube blogger recipes. That homemade, amazing fertilizer is a pure hoax. If you have extra yeast, bake bread with it instead.